Hey everybody, this is your daily dose of all things royal. Welcome back, my gorgeous, good-looking friends. Today would have been Diana, Princess of Wales, 62nd birthday. So far, knock on wood, Rachel has not tried to hijack the day and make it about herself. Outside the normal daily propaganda that Meghan tries to force down everybody's throat, there hasn't been, thank God, no new bombshells or revelations. But the day is not over yet, so you never know with this woman. Anyhow, I came across this article today, and I think it's worth discussing because the writer, Alison Bashoff, does raise some interesting points. Let me read some of this to you. The article starts off by saying, As Megan said, in typically syrupy style while promoting her Archetypes podcast last year, she and husband Prince Harry are like salt and pepper. We always move together. Megan, the ink fresh on her management deal with the ultimate Hollywood agent, Ari Emanuel at WME is still pursuing creative and commercial opportunities. It was a solo deal, not her and Harry, and an enormous coup. Harry, meanwhile, is said to be gravitating back to charity and campaigning work, planning a return to Africa to film a documentary following in the footsteps of his mother, a venture that will see him traveling to the continent alone. Their ambition to become a global humanitarian power couple seems, for the moment at least, to be on ice. If you read between the lines, you see what's going on here. Meghan and Harry, and this is my opinion, they are not together. They are not getting along, and this facade that they keep painting of them being together and still very much in love is BS. Quite frankly, when have they ever told the truth? What's expected to come next for Meghan is a string of commercial endorsements in fields meaningful to her, such as food, wellness, fashion, and therapy. I think she forgot to include Meghan is what is important to her. Notice that there's no mention about being a mother or a parent or a feminist, nothing of that sort. So Meghan is going full circle back to being the basic influencer. And now with this platform that she has, I don't think it's going to be as successful because the whole world knows that she's a fraud and no brand is going to want to be associated with this negative, toxic person. They can spin all these puff pieces and waste all this money, but the bottom line is, is that Hollywood has canceled them. And that's the truth. Well, although she mentions that there may be a book and it will have a feminist angle, and if you could see me now, I'm rolling my eyes. She then goes on to say that most urgently, though, the WME team will seek to bolster, or should that be resuscitate, Megan's rather tattered credibility in the entertainment industry after the embarrassing ending of the Sussex's 18 million pound deal by mutual agreement earlier this month. Those familiar with the situation say it was the lack of content, not the podcast viewing figures, which was the real disappointment for Spotify. Now this next part, honestly, I wouldn't expect anything less from Harry and Meghan. She writes, incredibly, however, for a couple who rarely seem to consider the consequences their action will have on others, Harry and Meghan are convinced their downfall was nothing to do with them. Now, for our little community, we all know that Meghan and Harry have yet to take any type of responsibility or accountability for their own failure. And what they're claiming now, and it's written in this article, that they both feel that they have been repeatedly unlucky with world events. And what that means is that they are blaming, and yes, folks, they are actually blaming the pandemic for their failure. They are blaming the queen's death for their failure. My gosh, how selfish of the queen to go ahead and die right in the middle of their comeback tour in Europe. You know that she was irritated that she had to take 10 days out to focus on somebody else than other than herself, at which she still couldn't even do that. Let's remember that she and her husband made those 10 days miserable for the family. Another claim that is being mentioned in this article is that the couple felt they were overshadowed by the failing health of Prince Philip, who died soon afterwards when they did the Oprah interview. 
nobody's going to feel sorry for them. And according to Alison Bischoff, she says a source in L.A. told her the word is that they think they've been really unlucky. Megan, incidentally, is a great believer in fate. I'm told she consulted a psychic to the stars, Mama Faye, at the suggestion of one of her Suits co-stars, and was told that she was going to meet a man who was like a king and going to be globally famous to boot. I'm assuming that that was before she married Harry, because I don't think she talks to any of her Suits co-stars today. So take it with a grain of salt. There's a very good chance that the story is also another made-up story by Meghan. But luck aside, the big question is how long before Harry turns his back on the show business life, for which he is obviously ill-suited and seems entirely uncomfortable with. In truth, Harry never really wanted to be a podcaster or a TV executive. He didn't want to be the pepper to Meghan's salt. In truth, I think Harry wanted William's life. He wanted a wife like Catherine. He wanted children like his brothers. And he wanted to just do the work and be told what he needed to do. All this real world stuff is not for him. Let's, let's be real. He never had to count money before or have to worry about the stresses that us normal people had. So I guess he's understanding that the grass is not so green on the other side. Last year, while the couple were filming their incendiary Harry and Meghan documentary, Meghan mused in an interview of the experience. It's interesting. My husband has never worked in the industry before. After the release of the documentary and the publicity drive for his best-selling memoir, Spare, which he did on his own, questions were asked as to how long Harry would remain in the spotlight. For one thing, he is much engaged in a battle to set right perceived past wrongs. In the UK, he is engaged in multiple legal actions against newspaper groups over allegations of phone hacking and unlawful information gathering, all denied. In America, which is now home, he is seldom seen. A documentary about his charity for servicemen, Heart of Invictus, has been commissioned by Netflix and is close to completion. Meanwhile, Megan and her team at Archwell will continue to try to get a green light on films and TV shows from Netflix until the deal runs out in 2025. They make it sound like Archwell is some big company when Archwell is really run by like one person, the new person that they hired who is in charge of scripted content, Tracy Ryerson. Poor thing must be like ripping her hair out because she is left now to do all the work because we all know Megan is a lazy bitch. Maybe Megan, with the help of seasoned power broker Emmanuel, can break through and end her run of bad luck. She is modeling herself on her old boss, Bonnie Hammer, an executive at NBC who gave her big break in suits. But even as she races towards bigger and more lucrative media ventures, her husband's concerns are centered on the environment and mental health. He was hired as Chimpo at a firm called Better Up in March 2021 which he says is the fastest access to mental health coaching and an app he turns to often on his phone. He told a conference this year, I never ever thought I would be sitting on this stage saying, therapy is good and coaching will change your life or both will change your life. And the more people that we can get to that, the better. His other passion is the Sustainable Travel Coalition Travelists. Founded in 2019, it has grown into a genuinely impressive operation. Mm, that's questionable, which now includes some of the biggest brands in travel, including TripAdvisor, Google, Booking.com, Visa, and the Expedia Group. Allison, I think maybe you need to dig in a little further and explore Travelists to see what's really going on there. Day to day, also, the couple have young children, Archie 4, Little Bet 2, who pull their focus. Yeah, Allison, do you really know if that's true? I mean, come on, nobody believes that. One friend told the paper that the couple are like any parents of such young kids, frazzled, adding, they're really happy together and live this idyllic life in Montecito, which is essentially a giant gated community of multimillionaires. But at the end of the day, they've been through a lot, and I think they've both felt quite ground down by it all. They're like any married couple five years in. Yeah, no one believes any of this shit. 
adding at the end of the article, they may still be very much married, but Harry seems happiest at the edge of the spotlight, a few paces behind his wife. What do you guys think of this? Somehow I feel like this is the palace writing this, and they're getting ready to bring Harry back into the fold. At least from listening to this article, they didn't want to disturb the hornet's nest by taking any jabs at the witch. But I do see Harry might be making a move to go away quietly and keeping his head down and doing the work that he was doing as a, a royal in order to rehabilitate his image because Meghan took it and destroyed it. For the sake of both their reputations and brands, well, whatever they have left of their reputation, this is a business relationship now. And I think for the short term, Meghan and Harry will not be announcing any kind of separation or divorce out of convenience. Right now, it's not good for either of their brands. And at the same time, neither of these two idiots will want to give the satisfaction to the people who from the beginning said that they weren't right for each other. Especially Prince Harry. He's not going to want to give William the satisfaction of saying that, you know what, bro, you were right. This woman is a fraud. We all know that opportunist Meghan will divorce Harry when the opportunity is right. So there will be a point in her life where she will get maximum benefit for this separation. It's not yet, though. She's going to hold on just a little longer until she squeezes every last drop out of the royal family and this dumb prince. Let's just admit now that Meghan and Harry are never going to admit that they were wrong in the choices that they made. They're never going to apologize, and they're going to continue to keep doing the same BS over and over. And when they fail, they're going to blame the people around them. Or they're going to turn around and say, well, it's the British media, or it's the U.S. media, or it's people on social media. These two have no self-awareness to see that they are the problem. Look, Meghan and Harry could tell whatever story that they want to make themselves feel better on why they're a failure. The world knows the truth and we're living in reality. Sadly, these two don't have any concept of that and they fail to have any kind of self-awareness on their behavior and how it has impacted others because it just appears that they're not capable to do so. Probably from a mental capacity, they don't have that capability to have any kind of perspective outside of their own selves. And that's exactly what's going on here. And sadly, as frustrating as it is, it's never going to change. And I know that this is disappointing to know, but Megan is not going to go anywhere. She is going to continue to keep bugging the world on a daily basis with her stupidity, but it will provide us lots of material to be laughing about because currently right now, these two are the laughing stock, not only in the United States, but in the United Kingdom, in Australia, in Canada, everywhere they go, they are a walking clown show. And I think that that's a positive because we are now seeing that they are getting what they deserve and they're going to continue to keep reaping what they sowed, and we're going to be here to watch. So let me know your thoughts. As always, I will be back with more content, but until then, please be safe, and I will talk to you later. Bye. I was such a broad. <laughs>